family. Welcome back to the Love Lab. It is holiday time. We're going to talk today about making your own chicken stock, which will set every piece of your meal over the top. This one, them little secrets, people go, what is that flavor? And you say, <laughs> you got, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's your homemade stock. Come on in the kitchen. Let's cook. So family, chicken stock. I am going to roast this and that's going to be the first differentiator in your chicken stock versus everybody else's, okay? Now, what I have here is a carcass of a chicken. I made, a, I roasted a chicken for dinner one day a few days ago. After everybody finished it, I said, don't throw that carcass out. I kept it and here I have basically the backbone and whatnot, okay? Now you can, if you don't have a carcass to use, you can always just buy chicken pieces or you can ask your butcher for any leftover stuff, chicken backs and stuff. My grandma used to cook chicken backs. Anybody know about that? Okay, anyway, that's what this is, okay? Now in that, we're going to create and add our mirepoix. That's our fancy French word. Now the Alabama word is the vegetable mix, <laughs> okay? Carrots, onions, and celery. I've gone ahead and cut all this up. I just cut my onion into fours. I just chopped the celery, it's three stalks. Now I go, you know, I always gotta do a little extra. Carrots cut, I also added about seven to eight cloves of garlic, because I love garlic, okay? And I've also added my aromatics. I'm gonna roast them with it. I've got some rosemary here, some sage, and some thyme leaves. And I'm gonna let all of this roast together on a 400 degree oven. See here, put a little olive oil on there, just like that. I'm gonna roast this at 400 degrees for about 30, 40 minutes until we get nice, rich color. And remember, this chicken's already done. We are already done. Kill the chicken and ate the chicken. This is what we're doing with the rest of it. I'm gonna get some more flavor out of it by going ahead and getting some good darkening going. All right, a little more olive oil, never hurt nobody. And into the oven this goes. I separated it out so you can see all the colors. Well, I'm gonna mix it up now. It don't really matter. We're gonna eventually put this all in a pot together. <laughs> all right, here we go, into the oven, 400 degrees. All right, family, well, our chicken and our mirepoix our vegetables were in the oven for 45 minutes on 400 degrees. I've taken them out and they, the house smells absolutely amazing. I can't even begin to describe how good it smells. But what I did was I took it and I put it right here on the burner, okay? Now I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take these pieces out. Look at that, see that nice deep color? This is gonna be good. I'm gonna put everything here into my stock pot. Hold on. Ooh. It's hot, be careful. Let me get just something on my hands. And you're wondering why is the heat going, right? Well, the heat's going because after I get all this out, I'm gonna glaze the bottom of this pan to get these good bits, okay? But we are gonna do some fancy to glaze them today. This is where the Calabama part come in here. Okay, let's get this out. See, just some nice color. That chicken looks so good. And because it was already cooked, that's why we only needed to roast it for a little bit. And we're gonna strain this whole mixture before we're done. All right. I'm scared to pick it up because don't don't play, it's hot. Oh, let me get a big spoon out from here. Woo, y'all. Cooking is a job, I'm telling you. This is gonna be the difference between your dressing and everybody else's because you know you got to use chicken broth in the dressing, all right? So we gonna use some stock, some good old homemade stock. All right. You want a nice deep pot? Okay, now, see how I've got my pot here and it's still kind of shimmering? I did turn the heat on under there. Now this is what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take, that's why it's spinning. I'm gonna take, this is just a gentle white wine. I'm using a dry white wine, I'm using a Sauvignon Blanc, and I'm only using a cup. It's not gonna change the, it's not going to take over the flavor, it's gonna add an extra depth of flavor, okay? So I'm pouring that in there, just one cup. And this is not one of those situations where we're trying to make it a super wine heavy dish. We're just adding some more dimension. Turn the heat back. I had turned the heat down because <laughs> it was popping. It was scaring me. And we're gonna take a spatula and I'm just gonna try to get some of these bits up off the bottom. All right. That's what deglazing is. Getting the bits up off the bottom because there's flavor. You know how you say I'm from California, so you know the gold and them their heels. There's flavor in them their bits. Don't sleep on the bit. Ooh, I smell it. I smell the wine, the glazing. And just go around with your spatula and 
I think the, the technical fancy name for the stuff on the bottom is fond. I think that's what they say, fond. If I'm wrong, charge it to my head and not my heart. Is that right? Charge it to my head and not my heart. Yeah, okay. I think that's right. If I'm wrong, sorry. But I think it's called fond. But we just call it flavor bits. How about that? Everybody know what a flavor bit is. <laughs> and see, by putting the pan on the burner like this to get this, I'm not having to hopefully do it real quick when it comes out. And I don't need to dirty up another pan for it. And I'm just literally scraping down the sides like this. See that? And then once you've got all that, it's gonna help with your cleanup too. All right, comes to just a little bit of a boil. See that look? Flavor. Look at that. I'm gonna show y'all something real quick. Woo. Look at that. You know that look good. Okay. All right, now we're gonna turn this heat off and we're gonna pour this liquid in here with our vegetables and chicken carcass. Okay, sorry you couldn't see there. <laughs> All right, we're gonna now cover this completely with water, okay? Let me put this on another burner. There, I'm gonna cover this completely with water until it's about, you know, a few inches over the chicken. You can put as much or as little in here as you want. You're gonna let it continue to simmer until it gets the richness of flavor that you're looking for, okay? So I'm gonna put some good old fashioned water in here and I'm gonna let this come to a boil slightly and then I'm gonna turn it down and just let it simmer for a couple hours. All right guys, our broth has come to a nice simmer and what you'll notice, I've already started here, on the top is there's, you'll get little bits of foam that will cook to the top and what you wanna do is just go in with a little skimmer and just skim off those pieces of foam, okay? Just like that, see? And you wanna check it every, now every 20, 30 minutes as it cooks. It needs to simmer for about two hours or so or more, it's up to you. But you want it to, um, whenever you see the foam rise to the top, if you don't have something like a fat skimmer like that, just use a spoon and just pull it off. Some kind of way to keep that out of there because you really don't need the foam. Now, it's important also to know that you're gonna turn this down to a simmer and not leave it at a high boil. If it's at a high boil, it's gonna evaporate and we're we gonna lose the stuff. That ain't the point, right? Okay? We want the flavors to really come together. And we, you know, we just want to, you know, okay? So we're going to turn this to a simmer. This is just beautiful. See how this is simmering up? I actually have my stove on low. But just however your stove works, bring it to a simmer. And, oh, a chicken carcass ain't never looked so good. <laughs> All right. We'll keep checking on this. Keep skimming the fat off. And the kitchen smells so good. Well, family, it has been three hours and this chicken stock has just cooked up so beautifully. The house smells amazing. We're gonna start the job now of separating it out so we can store it. I've got quite a few bowls going on here because, you know, I can't quite figure out the best way to do it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try a few things. We're gonna get to it, okay? <laughs> now I'm using a fine mesh sieve here, okay? And I'm gonna start by just going in you want to get all this out. So you see how I just lifted up all of that? This is how we're starting. All right, we're just going to get this all out. All right, and I have a separate bowl here to put it in. Okay. And then we're going to strain it again and save the liquid. So we just, all this stuff, y'all did a good job. Y'all did a good job. I am so proud of y'all. All of y'all, little, the little backbones y'all are floating around. I was feeling in here, trying to find that back, and I couldn't, I realized why. It cooks so nice and low and slow. The, the bone just, just, oh, there we go. All right. That is most of it. Okay, so now there will be a little bit more down in here probably that we can't quite get to. Let me just see if I can. Okay, yeah, so we're gonna switch over to this bowl, okay? And we're gonna pour this through this sieve, okay? Now, if it's very thick or if you have a lot of, um, if your pieces are too fine, you can use cheesecloth as well. I don't think we're gonna need to use cheesecloth today, but we'll see, okay? So let's pour this in here. Take your time, there is no rush, nothing to prove. 
Oh yeah. Whoa, it's coming up to the top. Oh, oh, look at those goodies that were at the bottom. Yeah, we could never get to all that. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's always gonna be a few goodies at the bottom that you can't see. So what I'm gonna do now, lift this up like that. Okay, put this back just on top here and I'll finish cleaning out the rest of that bowl. Now, let me show you what this looks like. Let me show you in this glass bowl. Ooh. You see how nice and rich that color is? That is what we want. I'm gonna do this even better. Come on, y'all. You ready? It's gonna go straight in like this. Straight in. Because I want y'all to see. This is chicken stock. <laughs> Yo! Okay, one thing I do need to tell you. I added two tablespoons of salt. I almost forgot to tell y'all because I gave it a taste. I was slow on the salt because I wanted to give it a chance to cook and come together first. But I did add two tablespoons. Ooh, this is pretty. Clean spoon. Look at that. See, I don't think I need, I'm not going to put this through a cheesecloth. It doesn't need a cheesecloth at all. But look at that. That deep color comes from roasting those vegetables and the chicken. That's hot, but man, that's good. Now you know how to make your own chicken stock. So you are ready for the holidays. I'm going to get this into some nice jars. This can keep in your refrigerator for four or five days if you're gonna just cook with it right away. Or you can freeze it in your freezer for up to six months. So you're set. All right, family, thank you so much for being with me today. I'm gonna go ahead and get this all packaged away because we're ready for Thanksgiving now. I'll see you next time right here in the Love Lab for more Calabama cooking with Chef Glorious. That's me, happy cooking.